What's up, everybody? We back with another message, another video. Thank you to all my new subscribers and future new subscribers. You know we do nothing here without God because everything is spiritually led by God over here. We cover the world from a spiritual and physical aspect to get the raw, real, and uncut answers. So anything you hear, anything you see in these end times, may you test the spirits, a.k.a. take the words and visuals back to prayer with God, as there are many Decepticons running around in these end times sent from the enemy, had a strong, close, and personal relationship with God. Good, great, and awesome. All right, everybody, May 28th, Word 2024 on a good old Tuesday. Just a reminder about prophecy that the Lord had given earlier this year, 2024, and how the enemy disguises his servants as servants of righteousness. You got to be careful. Very, very, very careful here. A lot of people look at accuracy and that is very, very bad because servants of the enemy and servants of God can be saying the same thing from two different viewpoints. OK, remember, the enemy is a thief, so he can steal himself. But we're going to talk about all of this in a second. So Deuteronomy 18, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. So when it does come to pass, a lot of people just assume that God is speaking through an individual, which may not always be true. Because Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So we got to be very careful. And that's where 2 Corinthians 11, 14 to 15 comes in. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. So he can't literally be light, but because he's a liar in how he speaks, it can convince people that he is an angel of light and what he's saying. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So, how does Satan have his servants look the same as God's? He's a thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He steals. So he can actually take the words of God's servants that the Lord has given that's out publicly right and speak the same thing to his servants but he has his side of the story to it you got to understand something God could warn somebody of death so that they don't die Satan can speak death through his servants as if it's set in stone so if a person dies, it looks like everybody heard from the Lord. You got to be careful. Job 1, 6 to 8. Satan attacks Job's character. So we know that Satan to and fro, <laughs> day and night, appears before God, the Lord, and accuses us. So now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. So they have conversations. That means that God has to give Satan permission to do things. So Satan has already spoke about this to the Lord and the Lord already knew what was going to happen before he even came up to speak to the Lord. He's all knowing the Lord. So do you see how both sides can be the same? They already had a conversation about this. That's why God tells you to come to him, test the spirits, because things come out like false teachings and stuff. So Revelation 12, 9 to 11 just kind of reinforces that. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren 
who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Okay. So he's been accusing people day and night, looking for things to use to have rights to their lives. He's like begging God. <laughs> he can't do anything without God's permission. So that's just more reinforcement that Satan is up there in the courts, freaking out, trying to get rights to God's children's lives. You understand, or anybody's lives at that. So when people give out these prophecies, yes, number one, Satan is a thief. He himself, not just the person, he himself can steal what's already out there and reiterate it in his own way that he wants to do it. So it sounds the same, but he wants the death, not the repentance. He wants the death so he can speak death. Such and such is going to die and not have any form of repentance coming after that. And saying this person is not going to repent because he doesn't want them to so they can die. Whereas another person may say a similar thing, but they say you need to repent so that you don't face X, Y and Z. They sound the same, but they're different, two different sides. That conversation was had in the courts of heaven. See that? That's why you got to be careful. Yeah, Satan can cause a lot of tampered with things to happen, but the Lord can allow it. The Lord can say, yes, these things will happen X, Y and Z up down. Right. Satan can also tell people through his servants reiterating this is going to happen god can say repent now satan can also tell his servants and say repent now why because the simple phrase repent now will stir up fear in people people it doesn't need to stir up fear in so essentially using repentance as a weapon instead of teaching it so it's not that he teaches it, he uses it as a weapon to stir up fear and falsely accuse people as well, compared to it being used for a good outcome by the Lord. Things can sound the same. Now a person can simply take words to try to look accurate. There are a lot of different factors. So when it comes to accuracy and when people say, oh, well, that person is so accurate. What does that mean? Yes, things will come to pass. And if things are going to take an alternative route, God is going to warn beforehand like he always does. So. You got to be careful. You know, all these claims I see people make about. Well, how many works have you done or that person was accurate here or this person teaches repentance. It's like, OK, well, who are they telling to repent? Because I've had people falsely tell me to repent and they're definitely not hearing from God. You know. Yes, the enemy can accuse you falsely and tell you to repent. It may not affect you, but it may deceive other people about you because you're being falsely accused openly. You got to use your head. A lot of people are in idolatry and it is getting real bad. And they chase prophecy instead of following God. So you can see what's really going on in the whole picture. If you are somebody that follows individuals leading people by fear. Because it doesn't give you an orderly way of moving. You could walk into a trap and that could cause death if you don't listen to what God is trying to tell you. He say his people perish due to lack of knowledge and that's one reason why they do. You know, let the blind lead the blind, denying the truth in front of your face, your eyes. You gotta be careful with what's coming next because people are gonna be telling you, see, I told you, I told you, now you have to do all of these things and that and this and get your plane ticket there and you gonna do it too, ain't you? Because God totally told you to do that himself, right? No. But anyway, <laughs> peace and blessings and I will catch y'all in the next one.